Well, we are in uh, Darkest Kent, uh, and my studio is this way over the. It's very safe bridge, but fish. So I work, uh, draw and paint downstairs. Generally draw here, generally paint there, but that's all space to use. Uh, music has been recorded here. It works as a recording studio as well. My working days uh, have always been fairly uh, structured, but during lockdown uh, they've been extremely structured. Um, I go for a walk every morning out in the fields and explore the forests and the, and the countryside. Come back, have a coffee, do a drawing, think about what I'm going to do. So I'll just sit down and uh, do an eight hour day. Uh, the music's around as a distraction. Um, and then upstairs is all uh, computer land. So the drawings and photographs and everything physical gets made down here and then it all moves upstairs and is scanned. The top couple of shelves of my books uh, from very early comics uh, like Arkham Asylum and Violent Cases, Mr. Punch, Black Orchid, and then Sandman, doing all the covers and the design work for that. And then children's books, my own books, Cages, Pictures that Ticks books, and Black Dog. Books with others like John Cale and Richard Dawkins. The other books are they're a mixed bag, lots of artist books illustrators, photographers, some comics. I like this sort of hermetic feeling <laughs> of being surrounded by voices uh, talking to me all the time. And I can focus and shut them out, and that's easy to do. But you only have to look up and glance over and you're inspired by something else. I love buying other people's work. I've got, uh, these are pieces by Baron Story, wonderful American illustrator and teacher. I like trying to just get an example of all of the people who have meant a lot to me. To see, to, to see their, the hand movement on the paper and get a sense of them and their, the gestures that they make and the thoughts that they have transferred to uh, making marks. Well, I've always drawn, so I went to art school just wanting to do what I wanted to do. Very blinkered. Uh, couldn't understand why they wouldn't leave me alone. And after a couple of years of just arguing with my teachers incessantly, um, I finally just looked up at the world that they wanted me to engage with. And um, I've been a sponge ever since really, and I love art from around the world, pretty much a bit of everything. And it's all gone into uh, my toolbox. What I'm interested in is trying to create a body of work that has a view, uh, a rationalist view, it's about the real world, but using the imagination and the power of the imagination. My mum bought me my first comic book when I was ill from school. Uh, I think I was about eight. And I totally devoured them and fell into those worlds. And that's a feeling that I love, just falling into, the wor into that world. And it's something I've, I, well, it's something I didn't get from prose for a long time. Like a lot of kids, I was not a big reader. I am now, but um, I wasn't then. And there's something about the cold black text on white paper that just never drew me in. But these these pages of images and worlds and characters and, uh, was wonderful. Every time you turn the page, my you know, breath is taken away. And that's why I still love comics. It, it was very much my first love, that medium. And I still keep coming back to it because I love that feeling. And I love the intimacy of it. The fact that you hear the words in your head and you start to hear the sounds of the story, uh, even though they're not really there. You start to sense the movement, motion of the characters, even though they're static. Um, you create 50% of the experience. I think that's why people really love comics as a medium. I don't have a copy anymore of my first comic. It was, it was Mighty World of Marvel, number, I think it was three, it might have been two. So it was Jack Kirby, uh, Fantastic Four and Steve Ditko, Spider-Man. They were English reprints of American comics in a sort of slightly newspapery print. Absolutely love them. So at the moment I'm doing um, a few books, a few books. Uh, the main one is a, another comic uh, along the lines of Black Dog in format and uh, the look of it. 
and it's a kind of another walking book. Black Dog, uh, to a degree, I did when I started walking uh, regularly every morning. Um, and there's a touch of that in the end of Black Dog. Uh, the new book is called Raptor, as in the bird of prey. Um, it takes place in two realms. One is, very, is, is, is here in the real world, but a hundred years ago in Wales. Um, and uh, it's about a writer uh, whose wife has uh, just died. Um, and he senses there's another world, a supernatural world, a realm that he could touch. And he joins the occult group, uh, the Golden Dawn, to try and reach this other realm. But really it's just grief, he just wants to see his wife again. The other half of the story is set in another realm. Um, and it's about, there are monsters in it and there's a character who has this sort of demon bird. So it's a fantasy story. Um, but actually that story is about uh, politics at the moment. Uh, it's about the corrupting nature of money in politics. So it's a kind of a satire really, this was the idea. And then these two realms touch and they bleed into each other. Uh, I'm also doing a conversational book with a wonderful artist called Hugo Gonzalez. I've always wanted to do one. Um, Milton Glaser did one with Jean-Michel Follon and they, they did a drawing each and then swapped and then carried on making a drawing from that drawing and it's a little visual conversation. And I've talked about doing this with lots of people but it never quite hit. And I mentioned it to Hugo and Immediately he sent me the first drawing, so we're off. Um, so we're trying to do one a week. Uh, um, so in a year's time we'll have a book. The uh, light box piece is mine. But the little drawing is by Milton Glaser. Um, uh, he died uh, a few weeks ago. Very important American designer. He created I Love New York, that little logo. But beautiful draftsman and uh, illustrator and great teacher. So up here it's, it's just a collection of the people I like really and uh, over the years finding something that just um, allows me to see the artist's hand. This is Anthony Tapier, great uh, printmaker. This is actually an original painting even though it's so small for a poster. It's by Walkuski, one of the great Polish artists. He hand paints all the type. Mick Rooney, Royal Academician. Uh, surrealist, also great draftsman. I like it because there are moments in it that I really love and there's a few things that I'm just a bit awkward with and so they sort of, I'm gonna live with them, you know, see if they uh, improve for me. Russell Mills is a, an extraordinary um, collage artist. He did a lot of album covers for people like Japan, David Sylvian. This is for uh, Roger Reno, Brian Eno's brother. Um, this is a... Uh, uh, print by another extraordinary prolific printmaker, Anthony Clave, who's had a huge influence on me. I found his work again in art school. I keep coming back to it, these incredibly strong, bold compositions. This is Windsor McKay, one of my favourite comics artists, one of the greats, uh, creator of Little Nemo and many others, but an extraordinary draftsman, an animator, and really the first person that turned comics into an art, I think. Uh, there were comics before Windsor McKay, but he was the first great artist, I think, doing comics. So this is upstairs in the studio. Uh, it's a, a, a mass of storage, various um, objects uh, that I've uh, collected over the years and will use directly in the artwork or take photographs of them. Stones, feathers, old books, scientific implements, copper, <laughs> copper, uh, I mean, all sorts of things, and loads of masks that I've either made or bought from Venice, various places that have been used for different projects. Masks are a big obsession with me. Um, so all of this gets used uh, as collage material, as I say, or gets um, used in the design for album covers, various things. This is uh, computers, uh, really. Um, everything gets scanned. I don't draw in the computer. I've never really got on with that. Um, I know lots of people do, uh, but I still like getting my hands dirty and making physical objects. But everything gets scanned and the control that the computer gives me is what I'm after really. So sometimes it's simply a matter of 
cleaning up and getting things ready and getting the most out of the colour and density of the inks for print. But sometimes it's heavy digital uh, intervention with uh, collaging elements together and uh, reworking it in the computer. The computer's great for trying things. You can try, try things infinitely and very quickly and um, set them aside and save off versions and it's very playful. You can get lost down the, ra the eternal rabbit hole of digital image making, but if you know what you're aiming for, roughly, it allows you to have a bit of a play on the way. Um, so this is the book I'm working on at the moment. Uh, it's called Raptor, and so these are the pages going in. Some of them are, uh, as you can see, painted and collaged, quite abstract at times, but then some of it is very clear, simple storytelling. The theme of grief has come up uh, a fair bit recently. Um, well, it's it, it embedded itself quite early because my uh, father died when I was very young, and it was the first big hit of real realism, real reality of the real world uh, hitting me when I was twelve. And um, ever since then, I've always had a sense of um, life does have an end, time is ticking, get on. Uh, get things done, uh, the sh there is a shadow sort of hovering. Uh, so in that sense I've found it really a positive, motivating thing in life, to just be aware that it's all, it's all going by, uh, and if you want to get things done, just get on with it. Um, and, um, and so last year I was dealing with my mum, who uh, died last year, and so uh, dealing, with, dealing with her decline and uh, all of those feelings has been really, uh, again, very strong. And like everything, I feel I need to put them somewhere. I need, you know, need to put those feelings somewhere. Uh, I'm, again, I feel very lucky to be able to have a place to be able to get that stuff out uh, and put it. I can put them. I can put those feelings in stories. Th you know, things that you learn that you think would be interesting to pass on, partly just to say, I've noticed this. Have you noticed this? Um, and partly just to work them out for myself. So I write them into stories. Dealing with the Paul Nash subject and, and uh, going through the war, First World War, and, and dealing with um, the loss of a baby in a film that I made called Luna. This issue of grief keeps on coming up and the book that I'm doing at the moment, Raptor. Um, it's a huge subject that everybody has to deal with and everybody has a, uh, a feeling about going into it and it, it, as a process, probably changes them. I'm interested in that change.